Hi, my name is Lisa and I want to welcome you to Mission Gathering Church Online and we want you to know that every single one of you is welcomed and celebrated no matter your race, sexuality, gender identity, beliefs, and every other identity that makes you who you are. Um, we are so glad you're here and we hope we can share some peace and encouragement with you this morning. Though we are apart, we are united in love for one another and our world. We are united in our striving for peace and justice and healing in all of the brokenness. We grieve that we are apart, yet we remember our connection and love for one another that goes beyond physical presence. Parts of our lives and worlds seem so dark. Bleak. Jesus said in Matthew 5, You are the light of the world. The light of God is in you. Do not hide your light, but let it fill every space in your heart and home so that people can find hope and peace in the light of God that is in you. We invite you to light a candle with us in your space, representing the light of God. And we welcome the light of God into our homes and our hearts, connecting each one of us together. The light cannot be overcome. And the light and love of God in you is strong. Why should I worry? Why do I freak out? God knows what I need. You know what I need. Your love is, your love is, your love is strong. Your love is, your love is, your love is strong. strong and you love me 
far from our vices and deliver us from these prisons. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples for a meal. He took a loaf of bread, he broke it, like we are so often broken in our own relationships with one another. Jesus showed us the way to healing by asking us to share our bread with one another in remembrance of his own example. Through the broken bread, we participate in and become the body of Christ in our world. So we eat the food together. Then Jesus took the cup filled with wine and asked them to drink of that same spirit of love and unity that was in him. And when we drink, we become the new life of Christ in the world. And so we drink together. God, may your loving presence be as real to us now as this food and drink in our bodies. In the name of Christ, in the name of divine love, amen. There's freedom at his throne. Hurt grows me to silence. Bearing guilt from other sins. Lord, lift my voice to cry out. Spirit, catch the tears that fall.
He finds a place inside our pain. Hallelujah. Take a moment and send some peace to someone you haven't talked to in a while. A friend, a family member, or a neighbor. Let them know that you are thinking about them and send them some love. Come back here in a few seconds for the message. Pick up some Doritos and Mountain Dew for the walk in tonight. Hey, Kelly, let me call you back. Joseph! Hey, Pastor Dave! How are you, brother? Oh, I'm, I'm good. I haven't I'm... seen you at the edge lately. Um. <laughs> just get, get in here, brother! Come on! <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> so good to see you. How you been? Um, I've just been really busy. Hey, can I pray for you, brother? Yeah, I'm on my way real yeah, quick let me to just something. Pray for you but... real quick. Come on, yeah. yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord Jesus Christ, God, Lord, we just, we just come before you in reverence, God, for my brother Joseph, that you would just fill him with all, all, all of the fruits of the spirits, God. Mm. God, I just pray that you just, just let the, let the strawberries of peace fall. God, the cherries of happiness, the apples of grace. God, the, the papayas, throw them on in too. Throw them in, Lord. God, I like bananas, and I know that mangoes are sweet. God, we just, we just pray for that right now, God. That you just seep in all the juices. Just all the heavenly juices, God. To quote a secular band, Lincoln Park, God, I've become so numb. Mm. So numb. Mm. In the shadow of the day, it's all about what I've done, God. And we'll cross this new divide together. God, because in the end, it doesn't even matter. Mm. In this hybrid theory, God, we're all minutes to midnight. We're all living things in this meteor we call life. God, as you know, in Mayhem 2, it says, the shields of the soldiers are red. The warriors are clad in scarlet. The metal on the chariots flashes on the day mm. that they are made ready. Yeah, God. God, we believe that, God, because it's so relevant. Right now, now. As we come together, God, we pray all this in your precious and your holy name. And God, as we're here together, okay, so that video was pretty crazy. Did that video bring up any thoughts or memories around prayer for you? It definitely makes fun of the, the youth group experience of an evangelical church. And it reminds me a lot of my own experiences with church, although the video is incredibly exaggerated. Um, maybe not for some people. But in my religious upbringing, I knew of one way to pray. It was talking to God, and it was either silent or it was out loud. And prayer is such a loaded word with so many experiences and connotations with it. Some people have really good life-giving experiences around prayer, and some of us uh, may have memories of prayer in church when they were young, uh, but haven't really known what to do with prayer since they were little. Others have incredibly hurtful and uh, painful experiences around prayer as um, a form of even manipulation by people in the church. I've had friends tell me that they were not seen as spiritually mature by their church leaders because they didn't pray a certain way. 
I've known people who've gone through traumatic life experiences around sickness and loss and depression only to have the, the people who should be giving them some solidarity and comfort respond with things like, you should have spent more time in prayer. Or if you just pray harder, pray more, and have more faith, God will uh, fix your problem, fix your depression, fix your grief. For some people, prayer is something that is reserved for those standing behind the pulpits or wearing robes or um, a sounder's hat or whatever your pastor is wearing. Prayer isn't, isn't for me. It's for the people who um, are spiritually um, mature or, or extra religious because they have a title of a pastor or a priest. You may know the feeling of being in a group with some fellow Christians and they close the group with a prayer. And you're already praying in your head, God, please, please, please do not make them pick me to pray, anyone but me. As if being chosen to pray out loud in a group is equal to being chosen as tribute for Hunger Games or like Frodo being chosen to leave home and take the ring to Mordor. You do anything in the world except pray out loud, heaven forbid. For some of us, just the mention of the word prayer can trigger some painful, difficult experiences. To help us understand what prayer is, we're going to talk about prayer over the next couple of weeks. And, and to understand what it is, I think we need to start perhaps by naming what prayer is not. Prayer is not a way to emotionally or spiritually manipulate one another. That is not prayer. Prayer is not a transaction between you and God. You pray for this and God grants your wish. Prayer is not a spiritual wish list as if God is Santa Claus where you just write it on the list and God will give it to you. That's not prayer. Prayer is not a super spiritual or religious thing that must include certain words and phrases. Um, prayer, like we saw in the video, is often full of these like filler words, jargon, uh, Father Gods and Lord Jesuses, and to fill up the time because it's like we don't, we're not really sure what to say. And we're uncomfortable with uh, silence. So the more words that we say, the better the prayer. Kind of like... Um, the opening video made fun of. That is not what prayer is. Teresa Blythe is a spiritual director and, and she tells a story um, in one of her books. She says, I remember once turning to prayer after a serious illness and, and uh, beginning to sob in distress. And concerned about this, she consulted her pastor and, and uh, she said, isn't prayer something to make me feel better? And her pastor smiled and said, not all the time. Prayer opens our hearts to the loving presence of God. And that presence may ask us to grieve and let ourselves experience our pain. It's a different way of understanding prayer than I grew up with. Sometimes prayer isn't getting rid of the hard things. Sometimes prayer is opening yourselves up to the hard things. Opening yourselves up to the presence of God. And that sometimes involves grief and pain and doubt and fear and anger. And prayer is maybe an openness, an allowance of experiencing those things, and processing those things. There's an uh, interview with um, a poet, Marilyn Nelson, in a podcast, one of my favorite podcasts uh, of all time, called On Being with Krista Tippett. She interviews Marilyn Nelson and then another incredible poet, Padrago Tuma. And um, Marilyn Nelson said in this podcast, a friend of mine who is a minister at a retreat, and the whole time during the retreat, they would talk and then they would go into their rooms alone and pray and when he was alone in the room to pray he was always talking to God 
And at one point during these long talks to God, he heard a voice that said, shut up and let me love you. And Marilyn said, for me, that for me is what it is to be quiet enough to feel held, to feel the embrace of the divine, to realize that I am a part of something vaster than vast, and to feel that, to recognize that, to feel thankful for it, and to hope that by opening myself to that awareness, I am allowing some of that to come through me. That is prayer for Marilyn. Prayer is not constantly talking to God. Sometimes prayer is just shutting up and letting God love you. Paul wrote a, ch a letter to the church in uh, Thessalonica, and it was in northern Greece. And he wrote this letter to encourage them. And he told them to rejoice at all times and to pray continually. Is Paul saying that we should run around constantly with our hands in the air, shouting for joy, just being full of happiness and constantly talking to God. Uh, if so, that would be incredibly annoying. I don't think that's what Paul is saying. The word translated rejoice is a Greek word, kairo, and it literally means to lean toward something or someone. And what are we leaning toward? The word in Greek for grace that's tied up with that word for rejoice. It means the goodness of uh, what God brings to you in the world, the goodness and the gift of life that is all around us. We are leaning toward the goodness of life, God's gifts of life. Another word for that is grace. That word for rejoice means we are leaning into the gift of life. So we rejoice and pray continually. That's what that means. It's not constantly talking to God. It is an awareness of the goodness of life. That is prayer. That is what it means to rejoice and pray continuously. 1986, John Bon Jovi released a song it made it to number one on the Billboard's Top 100 called Living on a Prayer. The words of that chorus say, take my hand and we'll make it, I swear. Whoa, we're living on a prayer. You know that song probably. In an interview with Time Magazine, John Bon Jovi talked about the song and he said, he said, I think I find more strength and faith than I do in organized religion. Prayer is not about organized religion. It's not even about a one-time action. It is a leaning into the gift of life and grace that is all around us and within us. It is not about religion. It is about a way of being in the world. An awareness of the gift of life from God. So as we close, I'm going to end with an a cappella version of John Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. Just kidding, I'm not going to do that. That would be ridiculous. Uh, next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about prayer. We're going to talk about what Jesus taught about prayer and hopefully expand our understanding of what this means to live in prayer and to have that be a way of being. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you'll join us on Zoom uh, right after the service here. We'll see you soon.